All right, at least one of you can hear me, right? <laughs> I want to welcome all of y'all back. It's a little different this morning, but it's great to be back inside of uh, God's house this morning. It's great to be back inside the church today. And so I uh, want to welcome all of you here. Uh, the, the welcome, uh, or the reopening committee, I'll get this straight in a minute. The reopening committee had a couple of announcements they wanted me to make uh, right off the bat this morning. Uh, a couple of things is when we uh, dismiss this morning, uh, don't just get up and start running out. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to dismiss you guys in an orderly fashion, uh, or so to say. But we're going to dismiss in a rows today. And then as we do that, uh, there, is a, there are a couple of offering plates in the, I guess you call that the front or the back, ever how you want to call it. Uh, as you go out, you can drop your offering in there if you want to. And then, whoop, they took the plate. There was a plate over here. Uh, <laughs> as you go out this side, for those that go out this side, there will be an offering plate over there. Uh, for those of you in the parking lot this morning, I feel like... All right, thank you. Hopefully they'll be able to hear me on uh, Facebook. We, I tell you, it's like we got cameras going, we got people outside, I got you guys inside here, try to keep them all organized. It's a little crazy this morning, but we'll get to it. But let's go to the Lord in prayer this morning. Let's thank him for allowing us to come back inside the church. Let's thank him for uh, all the people and all the effort it took to get us back in. And then let's remember that one person that we've been praying for. You know the person that you've been praying for for a while. Let's remember them in prayer this morning as we open up in a word of prayer. Let us pray. Father God, we come before you this morning, Lord, and we just thank you today for all that you've done for us. Lord, we thank you that once again, we're in, inside the building, Lord, and worshiping you, Lord. We thank you that we're able to come back in and, and, and just hear your word today. Father, we just uh, know that this is such a blessing for all of us to be able to come back inside. Father, we know that the church is not this building. We know the church is so much more, but Lord, it does feel good today to be back in, in your building. Father God, we just ask that you continue to be with us this morning as we come together to worship. Father, we ask that you draw us close to you. Lord, we ask that this morning, Lord, that you help us to understand who you are, Lord. To put all the things of the world to the side, Lord. To put distractions away, Lord, and just to lift up your name today. Lord, to praise you in prayer. To praise you through the study of your word this morning, Lord. And Father, as we lift up names to you this morning, Lord, we know there are so many in need in our church, and our community. But Father, each and every person here, Lord, is, is sending up a request, a prayer for a special person, Lord, today. And Lord, we thank you for giving us the ability to pray. And we ask that you continue to be with us, Lord. Continue to help us, Lord, to pray for that one person. We, Lord, we pray that you'll meet, meet the needs, Lord. Be with the people, Lord, that just need you today. Help them in a way that only you can. In your holy name we pray. Amen. All right. So once again, it is so great to uh, to be back in, and, and I'm going to uh, give you a few announcements this morning, and then we'll get into our prayer request. Uh, a couple of things that are happening. Youth, uh, we're going to meet at 6 o'clock tonight. Youth will meet at 6 o'clock tonight in the fellowship hall tonight. We're trying to get you back downstairs in your room, but for tonight, 
Uh, we'll meet in the fellowship hall tonight at 6 o'clock. Just a few other things that we're starting to open up around the church. So youth, 6 o'clock tonight in the fellowship hall. You'll start uh, a new Bible study. Uh, have a fun time for a while tonight in the fellowship hall. So that'd be for the youth. Uh, Tuesday morning at 10 a.m., we're going to have our prayer meeting. If you uh, are available, I invite you to come out Tuesday morning and join us uh, as we have our prayer meeting Tuesday at 10 a.m. as we come together to, uh, to pray. And then in a couple of weeks, in a couple of weeks, we'll begin having children's activities during the morning worship service. So uh, while we're meeting over here, the children uh, will be meeting next door in the fellowship hall. That'll be in a couple of weeks. Uh, we'll give you more details about that next Sunday. But for any children, uh, we'll begin meeting over there in a couple of weeks. Our reading this week is from 1 John. Last week was uh, chapters 1 through 3. Uh, this week we want to read 1 John chapters 4 and 5. So just a couple of chapters this week. Uh, I wasn't able to get the videos up uh, this week for, for the first three verses. I will try to get those, the entire uh, book of 1 John up this week and have videos available for all five chapters of uh, 1 John that we can read this week. So uh, uh, 1 John uh, chapter 4 and 5, though, is our reading. And then... Um, uh, many of you may know this already, but for those of you that do not, uh, Erica uh, had a little baby boy yesterday, yesterday afternoon, uh, at 340. There was a few complications, but uh, mom and baby are both okay. Uh, it is Gatlin Ray is his name, Gatlin Ray, 7 pounds, 2 ounces, 20 inches long. And so uh, I talked to Nick this morning, and uh, everybody was doing well. There, like I said, there was a few complications yesterday. Um, but everybody is doing well. He just asked that he said thank you for all the prayers. Asked that we continue to pray for uh, for mom and baby both, and pray for Boston and, and Nick, and uh, just continue to remember them in prayer as well. But uh, happy uh, uh, happy family there. Uh, looks like a healthy baby boy for them. So let's just uh, continue to lift them up in prayer. All right, now on to our prayer request. Jim, yes. Uh, the mission action is collecting deodorant. Okay. For Red Box Ministry at the Women's Prison in Raleigh. There is a sheet of little things in the back with the specifications for that. For that, okay. So, uh, Women's Group is collecting deodorant for uh, the, the the Red Box uh, collection. There's some sheet back there to give you the, the proper size because it has to be a certain size uh, for them. So, if you'd like to collect, to, to bring that, bring it just on Sunday morning in the next few weeks. Uh, and it's on the sheet. It is on the sheet, okay. All right, so women's group is collecting the, uh, um, the deodorant information on the back. I'm not used to being inside the church. I'm not being used to ask people if there are any more announcements. <laughs> it's been so long. Normally, everybody's in the car, and I can't, see, I can't even see faces. So uh, uh, any other announcements this morning before we move to prayer requests? Yeah. yeah. Okay, so uh, doing the barbecue again, but no sign-up sheet. Uh, just get a hold of Lucy or get a hold of Rhonda. Uh, the people in the parking lot couldn't hear you too. So get a hold of Rhonda, Rhonda or Lucy with that, and you will cook it the week. When was, the Saturday before Thanksgiving. The Saturday before Thanksgiving is when it will be cooked, and that's for Relay for Life. So anybody that wants some of the barbecue, uh, get a hold of Rhonda or Lucy, and then it will be cooked the Saturday before Thanksgiving uh, to, to be able to pick up. Anything else this morning before we move on to prayer request? Like I said, I'm not used to being able to ask. All right, let's move on to prayer requests this morning. Uh, just a few prayer requests for you. Actually, a lot of prayer requests today. So uh, uh, let's continue to remember uh, Gary Cabinets. Mentioned him last week, Gary Cabinets. Uh, remember Harold Craven. A uh, hospice has been brought in for Harold Craven. So remember uh, him and family in prayer. Uh, remember Jennifer Manning. She's still in the hospital. Okay, let's remember Jennifer Manning still in the hospital. Uh, I mentioned Nick and Erica and uh, Ralston and, and new baby Gatlin. Uh, continue to remember them in prayer. We've been praying for uh, Linda Layton. Uh, she passed away this week, so let's remember the Linda Layton family uh, in prayer this week. Let's do, please continue to remember uh, our country, remember our president uh, as he has uh, been diagnosed with COVID. And uh, it's not a political thing, it's a, it's a godly thing. We need to pray for our leaders. And uh, he is uh, uh, sick and ill right now, so we need to lift him up in prayer. 
I want to remember our president in prayer. Continue to remember our country in prayer with everything that's going on. And I ask that you continue to remember our community as well and remember our schools. Uh, a lot of schools are getting ready to start back in person for the first time this week. And so let's remember our schools, staff, administration, all of them. Are there any other prayer requests? Once again, I'm not used to being able to do this. It's been a while. Any other prayer requests this morning that we have for anybody? We need to remember Clayton McManus's daughter, Cam. Clayton McManus's daughter, Cam. Cam. Okay. Clayton McManus's daughter, Cam. Any other? Okay. Remember Gary. Gallimore, he's in Chapel Hill at the hospital, mm -hmm. Gary Gallimore. Anyone else? All right, well, let's go to the Lord in prayer this morning. Uh, a lot of names, a lot of things going on. Lord knows what they all are, though. And let's, bring, let's go to the Lord in prayer uh, this morning, and then we'll start into the service. We'll be in uh, John chapter 10 this morning before we'll be at. But let's go to the Lord in prayer today. Father God, we just come before you this morning, Lord, and, and we just want to say thank you once again for all your blessing, for allowing us to uh, be in your house today. And Lord, our prayer list is long. Lord, there's just so many names, a lot of names that we won't even mention. And Lord, for us, it may seem like a lot, but for you, Lord, you know each and every need before we ever mention them. And Father God, today we just ask that you be with each and every one. Lord, we lift up these families that have lost loved ones recently. Lord, we just ask that you continue to give them uh, a comfort, a peace, a strength that can only come from you. Father, for those that are sick this morning, Lord, that just need a healing touch from you, Father, we bring them to you and ask that you give, uh, give them healing, Lord, that your will will be done in their lives. Father, we lift up our country to you today. We lift up our president, Lord, that ask that your healing hand to be upon him. Be with our country and all that is going on, Lord. I pray that you just move our leaders, Lord, and just move your hand in such a way that uh, people will stand up and follow your word, Lord, in your way instead of the way of the world. Father, be with our schools, with our, our students, our, our teachers, our staff, administration, Lord, everyone that's going back this week. Father, we just ask that you be with them and help them, Lord, uh, as, they, as they continue to go back, as they continue to go to school, Lord, just continue to keep them safe. Father, those that know you as their Savior, Lord, we just pray now that you just let them be a light shining in a dark world for you, Heavenly Father. Lord, we know there are many other names on the list. Lord, we know there are many other needs. Lord, we just ask that you be with each and every one of them. Continue to be with our community, Lord. Show us how to reach out during these days and this time, Lord, to show others your love, to show them, Lord, that uh, uh, there is hope through you. Father, be with us this morning as we go through your message, Lord, as we, as we hear your word today. Heavenly Father, I just want to pray and just ask that you help us draw closer to you because of your word. In your holy name we pray. Amen. All right, so we'll be in John chapter 10 this morning. John chapter 10, we're going to be in verses 1 through 10. We've been looking at the I am's of Jesus Christ, who he is in his own words and who he said he is. And we've looked at him uh, as uh, the great I am. He is God. He is the one that, uh, that is God. We've seen him be the bread of life that gives us satisfaction. We've seen how he's the light of the world and how he will guide our path and, and that we need to follow him and not follow the world. And so today we're going to be in John chapter 10. We're going to be looking at the next I am that he says John chapter 10, beginning in verse 1. Most assuredly, I say to you, he who does not enter the sheepfold by the door, but climbs up some other way, the same is a thief and a robber. But he who enters by the door is the shepherd of the sheep. To him the doorkeeper opens, and the sheep hear his voice, and he calls his own sheep by name and leads them out. And when he brings out his own sheep, he goes before them, and the sheep follow him, for they know his voice. Yet they will by no means follow a stranger, but will flee from him, for they do not know the voice of stranger. Jesus used this illustration, but they did not understand the things which he spoke to them. Then Jesus said to them again, Most assuredly I say to you, I am the door of the sheep. All who ever came before me are thieves and robbers, but the sheep did not hear them. I am the door. If anyone enters by me, he will be saved, and he will go in and out and find pasture. The thief does not come except to steal and to kill and to destroy I have come that they may have life and that they may have it more abundantly. So I have a question for you this morning. How are you living? How is your life today? Not, not are, are you living with a lot of money? That's not why I'm asking. Is how is life treating you? 
How is life treating you today? I know in this day and age, in this world we're living in, you ask these people, well, how is life treating you today? How is life doing? How would you rate your living today? A lot of people will go, eh, you know, it's not good right now. It's not good. Have you seen what's going on in the world, preacher? So my question is, would you be like Jesus says here? Would you say you have an abundant life, full of joy, full of life? Would you say that you're living a life that is abundant? Or as one translation says, a life that is full. Ask yourself that question. Ask yourself why or why not in, in that question. And so today as we look at this, we want to see what Jesus is talking about. When he's telling the Israelites that he is the gate or that he is the door, depending on your translation. Why would Jesus say something like this? Why would Jesus say, I am the gate? Why would he equate himself to? With a door or a gate. Sounds kind of weird, doesn't it? Sounds kind of strange for Jesus Christ to say, I am the door or I am the gate. But after he calls himself the gate, he goes on to say something else. He says, I have come that you may have life more abundantly or that you may have life to the full. And so this morning as we look at this, we want to see what Jesus means. Because there are many people in the world today there are many people in the world today who spend their entire lives, their entire lives looking on how to have a life that is full, how to have a life that is full of joy. There are people in the world that spend their entire life looking for that door to walk through that leads them to joy and leads them to this abundant life. But through all of this, the question still goes back to the question I asked several weeks ago that we want to look at. The question still is this, who is Jesus to you? Who is Jesus Christ to you? To understand this, we need to understand what he says about himself. And so today, to understand who Jesus is and how to have a life full of joy, how to have an abundant life because of who he is, we must understand what it means when the Bible says or when Jesus says he is the door or the gate. To you and me, a gate or a door may sound kind of strange. To you or me, a gate or a door for a sheep may sound a little weird, a little strange to us. But for the people that Jesus was talking to, for the people Jesus was talking to in that day, it would be something that they were very familiar with. The people would have been shaking their heads up and down going, we understand what he means when he says a sheep gate. Now, they didn't understand what he meant when he, they, when he said, I am the gate. But when he talked about the sheepfold and he talked about the gate, they would have understood. You see, the sheepfold was a place of security. So what they would have, they would have a, a, an enclosure that would be surrounded by a wall of rocks, a, a building maybe on one side, and it would be too high for the sheep to jump over. So imagine this, this enclosure that was too high, made out of rocks or whatever, for the sheep to jump over. It would be too high for that. And then a lot of times, they would put thorny branches on the top of the walls to keep thieves from coming in and trying to steal the sheep. And there would only be one in exit or entrance in this sheepfold. So there would only be one entrance in this wall, one opening in this wall. And that would allow the sheep to go in and the sheep to come out is what it would allow the, the sheep to do. And the shepherd, though, there was no gate, there was no door on this wall. The shepherd would come in, the, the gatekeeper would bring all of their sheep in, and then in some communities, multiple shepherds would bring their sheep into one, into one sheepfold. And then at night, or whenever the sheep were in there, one shepherd would lay down in the gate and completely lay down in the gate, and so no sheep could escape, but no enemies could come in unless they went through the shepherd that was sitting in the gate. And so, when in that one hole there in the fold. So, when Jesus Christ said, I am the gate, or when Jesus Christ said, I am the door, he was talking about he is physically, he is the one that would sit there. And only the only people, the way they could get into the sheepfold, or the only way you could get out of the sheepfold, was if you went through Jesus Christ. You had to go through the shepherd. You had to go through the one that was there. And so, the people in Israel would have understood this. They would have understood that Jesus was the only way, that Jesus was the one to get through. And then whenever the shepherds would call, would come the next morning, or whenever to come pick up their sheep, they would call their sheep by name, 
and they would understand, recognize the voice of their shepherd, and they would follow. And that's what we're going to talk about next week. But this week, we're going to look at the gate. So why, what does this mean for you and I today? Why is it important for us to understand that Jesus is the one that is standing there in the entrance and the exit, and nothing can come through or nothing can go out without him? So this morning, we want to look at the significance of why Jesus is the gate or the door. And so the first thing we want to understand is this. Jesus is the only way. Jesus is the only way. Notice that Jesus starts by saying that if you don't come into the sheepfold through the gate, that you're a thief and a robber. Now think about that for a second. He said the only way to come in is through the gate, and if you don't, you're a thief or a robber. You're trying to get in some way that you shouldn't. Jesus is telling us when he says this, he is the only way. I am the one true way. There is no other way, is what Jesus is saying. There is only one door to the sheepfold, and Jesus is there. Anyone who tries to get in by any other way is a thief, is a robber, and they're going to find punishment and death. That's why false teachers and false religions are. They're the thieves and the robbers that try to get in and get the sheep and pull them out and take them and lead them off to their death. They're the thieves and they're the robbers of our souls and what they are. And if the sheep are the Lord's people and the pen is the place where they find salvation and protection, then the Lord, as the only means of getting in there, is the only way. He is the only way to the Father. He is the only way to the Father. That is the message of Jesus Christ. It always has been. It always will be. He is the only way to the Father. That's why in Acts chapter 4 it says, There is salvation in no one else, for there is no other name under heaven given among men by which we must be saved. Jesus Christ is the only way. But in our world today, that's not a popular message. You see, in our world today, that is not the message that people want to hear. They want to say, well, I can get to heaven this way, or I can get to heaven that way. And Jesus is saying, I'm the only way. And when you and I stand up and say, Jesus is the only way, people don't like it. People say, well, there's got to be another way. But you see, if you could reach God any other way, Jesus Christ would not have had to come and die for us all. He's saying, I am the way. But God's love was so profound for us. That he prepared and he sent his son to pay the ultimate price for our sins so that we may be free. So Jesus is the only way. I'm here to tell you this morning the gospel is not one of many options. It is the only option. It is the only way. Jesus Christ is the only way. People look at this and say, well, that can't be right. There's got to be other ways. No, it's not. Jesus is the only way. Which leads us to the next question. The only way to what? When he tells us he's the gate, he's telling us, I am the only way to salvation. I am the only way to salvation is what Jesus is telling us. Jesus is the only way to life. He is the only way to salvation. You and I today, when everybody listen to this really, really close for just a minute, we are not saved because we admire Jesus. We are not saved because we come to church. We are not saved because we know the Bible. We are not saved because we sing all the right songs. We are only saved when we repent of our sins, trust in Jesus and Him alone as our Lord and Savior. That is the only thing that brings salvation. To be saved means that you have your sins forgiven. It means that you become a child of God. It means that you have assurance of heaven, eternal life, life that is full. And it can only come through Jesus Christ. Don't let anybody fool you and tell you there is any other way to salvation. It is only attainable by entering through the gate, which is Jesus Christ. There is no salvation in any other way today. There are many false religions out there. There are many false teachings in the world today. And they lead us astray. And they'll say there are other ways to salvation. I believe it's been at least a year or more on Wednesday night. I told you, I did a little research, and there were over a thousand different religions that I found in like two minutes on the internet that were proclaiming they had all the right answers. Jesus Christ is saying, they're all false. If you want to get to heaven, there is only one way to heaven for salvation, and that is through Jesus Christ. 
There are false teachings in the world that will lead us to stray. They tell us that there's work that you can do. They tell us that there's money that you can spend. They tell you that there's men that can get you to heaven. Jesus Christ is saying none of them are true. Salvation is through Jesus Christ and through Jesus Christ alone. All others are thieves and robbers trying to steal your soul. But unfortunately today, many people sit in churches and they don't understand salvation through Christ. Salvation is only through Jesus Christ. Salvation is you coming broken. Salvation is you coming sinful before Christ who is perfect and sinless. That he took on our sins when he died on the cross for us. Salvation is confessing our sins before God. Accepting the gracious gift of Jesus Christ as payment for our sins. There is no other means of salvation for you or anyone else today other than Jesus Christ. Some of you may be saying, I've heard this. I've heard this before, preacher. I know all this. Which leads us to the next few things we need to learn. Because I believe a lot of us may know this. We may believe this. We may hear this. But are we living our lives like we believe it? Are we living our lives so that others can see that Jesus Christ is the only way to salvation? Are we leading people astray in the things that we say and the things that we do? Or do we believe things that people tell us and we don't go look in the Bible to make sure they're true? What do we learn next from Jesus Christ? How do we know for sure? How do we know what's going on? The next thing that the Bible tells us that's important about Jesus Christ being the gate, not only is the only way to salvation, not only is it only through Jesus that you can have salvation, he says that whenever he is the gate and you do have salvation, it says the sheep will go in and out. But what can we learn from this? What does that mean that we can go in and out? What this tells us is that Jesus Christ provides protection for us. He provides spiritual protection for us. He has promised that once we become sons and daughters of, of God, we, once we accept him and realize he is the only way to salvation, once we confess our sins to him, nothing can take us away from God. Nothing can take us out of the hands of Jesus Christ. Many people believe that if they're harmed or sick, God has abandoned them and God's not doing his job or they're not living their life right. You see, Jesus Christ said, I will protect your soul is what I'm doing. I'm protecting your soul today. He's not necessarily promised that he's going to keep us from all harm. He hasn't promised us that everything will go perfect for us. What he has promised us is he has promised us safety for our soul. We can come in and out knowing we are his sheep and nothing will happen to us because he is watching over us. He will give us safety for our souls. But yet so many people today still live in fear. This isn't the picture that Jesus has given us. Jesus has given us a picture of a sheep family, not huddled in a little fence, not huddled up all together, scared to death of what's going to happen, scared if a thief or a robber is going to come at night. Jesus gives us a picture of the sheep coming in and out, happy as can be, coming in and out of the sheepfold, going to the pasture to eat and graze. He's given them safety, and so they're living their life free of fear. The door is providing access to freedom and living a life that is abundant. But too many of us today, we live a life of fear because we don't understand that Jesus is protecting us and he's protected our soul when we accept him for salvation. We don't understand that. So we live all huddled up in fear of what the world's going to do or what's going to happen to us in the world. What we need to do is we need to look to Jesus Christ and we need to say, he is the only way. He is the gate. He is the one that protects me. He is the one that saves my soul. I don't have to worry about living in fear of this world because Jesus has already conquered the world. I can come in and out of the sheepfold. I can come in and out of the gate with Jesus Christ. He is watching over me. And the thief and the robber, they cannot steal. They cannot destroy my life. Why? Because Jesus Christ has already paid the price for my life. So not only is he the only way to salvation, he is also our safety for our souls when we accept him. And then finally, he is our satisfaction. He is our satisfaction. If he is the gate, if he is the only way to salvation, then he is our only satisfaction. A few weeks ago, when we talked about Jesus being the bread of life, it reminded us that he was the only one that can satisfy us. We can get full on other things, but we can only be satisfied through Jesus Christ. And so what this is saying is Jesus said, if you trust in me, the thieves come to steal and destroy. But I come to give you life. 
I come to give you a life that is abundant, a life that is full, a life of joy. The fullest satisfaction that you'll ever find in your life is being full of Jesus Christ and satisfied in Him, studying and reading and doing His will. The thief comes to steal, kill, and destroy, but Jesus comes to give us abundant life. Abundantly here means beyond what is necessary, exceeding, superabundant. It means superior. But here's the problem. Sometimes we begin to think, well, God's not giving me a full life. God's not giving me abundant life. Have you seen what I drive? Have you seen where I live? Do you see how sick I've been recently? Do you see what's going on in my life? Have you looked at the world, preacher? How can we have an abundant life if you look at the world today? And Jesus Christ is going, I'm not worried about the world. I've already defeated the world. I've already conquered the world and everything in it. He wants to give us a life that is full of Jesus Christ. Is your life overflowing today? Not with worldly things, but does your cup overflow with, with the love of Jesus Christ in your life? Are you living that kind of life? Psalm 23, 5 says, You anoint my head with oil, and my cup overflows. God, Jesus Christ, has so much love for us that when he pours it on us, it should just flow out of our hearts. It should overflow our lives. But we're so concerned too many times with the things of this world that we forget that our satisfaction is in Jesus Christ. And we forget that sometimes because we forget that he is the only way to salvation. He is the only one that can save us. Money's not going to save us. What you drive is not going to save you. Where you live is not going to save you. Whether or not you come to church or not, honestly, is not going to save you. Only Jesus Christ is going to give you that salvation. And he's saying when you have that salvation, and he finds safety in him as the sheep, as the gate, then he will live a life that is so full of, abundantly full of his joy that you will never seek anything else. Jesus Christ as the gate is our salvation, he is our safety, and he is our satisfaction today. You see, we live in a world that is lost. They're looking for a way today. And they're telling us there's so many ways. I don't know where to go. I don't know how to find the true way. We need to look at them and we need to show them. We need to tell them that Jesus is the way. You see, Jesus didn't come to earth to brag. He didn't come to earth to condemn. He came to earth to give us life. He came to earth to give us salvation is what he came. And that is the message we need to tell people. We need to tell people we can find joy in our life amidst all this turmoil because we have safety, we have satisfaction, and most importantly, we have salvation through Jesus Christ. Christ came so that you and I could have eternal life through him. And the question is, do you know that today? Do you know what it means to have eternal life through him? And if you can answer yes to that, my next question is, are you living life like that? Are you living life knowing that Jesus Christ is your salvation, your safety, your satisfaction, that all that you need today? Do you understand that he is the only one that can give you an abundant life today? Do you understand that there is nothing this world can give you that will satisfy your soul? Only can happen through Jesus Christ. He is the only gate. He is the only door. He is the only way to salvation for you and I today. We need to accept him. We need to confess, come broken before him. And then we need to go out and live our life for him today. So as we close this morning, the question is simple. Do you know Jesus Christ is your only salvation today? Have you accepted him? Don't be fooled by, by years and years of sitting in a pew. Don't be fooled by years and years of hearing people preach and never talking about Jesus Christ. Understand that there is nothing else that's going to get you to heaven other than Jesus Christ. He is the gate. He is the door. He is the only way to the Father in heaven. There is no other name where we can be saved other than Jesus Christ. And that is the question today. Do you know him? If you do, praise the Lord. But now, are you living a full, abundant life, living in his satisfaction and his safety so that others can see it today? If not, we need to go before him. Either way today, we need to go to the Lord in prayer and acknowledge that he is our only way for salvation. And he is our only way for satisfaction and a full life today. And we need to thank him for that. Or we need to accept him for that, accept his salvation, his gift, by confessing our sins before him today. So as we come together this morning, I ask that you join me in prayer. We're still not going to have an altar call. 
I'm still not going to have you come up front, but I would ask this morning, though, that if you do not know Jesus Christ as your Savior, wherever you're at, in your car, if you're watching on, on Facebook, if you're here, here, go to the Lord this morning. Ask Him to show your sins to you. Ask Him to show you your sins. Confess. Believe that He is the only way to salvation. Call upon Him for that salvation. And He's promised us that if you ask for forgiveness, Believe that he is God's only son risen from the dead. He has promised us that he will save you and that you can be saved today. So this morning, let's close in prayer. And let's ask the Lord to help us understand what it means that he is the gate. He is the door to salvation, safety, and satisfaction. Let us pray. Father God, we come before you today, Lord, and we understand that you are our only salvation. Father, we understand that you are the only way to heaven. Lord, we know that through you, we can have safety in our lives through your salvation. We can have satisfaction through your love for us in our life. And Father God, I don't know everyone that's listening today, Lord, I don't know if they know you as their Savior or not. But Father God, I do know that you love them. You love everyone that can hear this message this morning, Lord. And that you want them to come to know you as Savior. Lord, I pray this morning that wherever they're at, Lord, they will understand their brokenness. They will understand their sinfulness, Lord. They will come to you, Lord, looking for salvation. They come to you with confession. Coming to you knowing that they can't find another way for salvation other than you today, Lord. And Lord, that they will come and ask you, Lord, to be their Savior. Heavenly Father, be with them today. Be with the decisions that are being made today. Father, help those that already know you to begin living a life that is full, a life that is abundant, Lord, a life that people just want to give to you, Lord, a life that shows others your love flowing through our hearts today, Lord. Help us to be those people, Lord. Help us to be your children that can find their satisfaction and their safety in you today, Father. Be with us as we go out today. Lord, continue to help us be a light to those around us, a light to this community, Heavenly Father. Help us to show people that you are the one, only, true way to salvation. In your holy name we pray this morning. Amen. I do want to thank all of you for coming out today. Uh, this will be our new normal for a while. I hope everything uh, worked out right. Everybody in the parking lot was able to hear. Everybody uh, online was able to hear. Okay, this will be our new normal. Don't forget Bible study tonight for the youth at 6 p.m. Bible Our prayer meeting Tuesday at 10 a.m. Don't forget, if you want to get some deodorant uh, for the, the collection, information is when you go out there. All right, here's how we're going to dismiss this morning. It's going to be a little different. If you're on this side of the church, we want to start with the back row, and you guys are going to go out the, the front door, back door, wherever how you want to look at it, row at a time. And please uh, keep your mask on uh, until you get in your car, if you don't mind, and uh, try not to congregate right around the door. If you want to talk, if y'all can spread out, that'd be great. Guys on this side of the church, uh, we like, we'd like to ask you, front rows, go first, go out this side door here and walk around the sidewalk and go out. That way we're not all trying to get out at one time. So once again, thank you all for being here this morning, and uh, you are dismissed.